Ken, how are you? I'm great. How about yourself? I'm doing very well. Did you have a nice holiday? I did. How about you? I did. Yeah. Lots of good food. <laughs> great. Yeah. And good yeah. people. <laughs> good food, good people, Some sometimes too much good food. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right. It's just, just at the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which right, is crazy right. to think it's already the end of the year. It kind of flew by for me. It totally trips me out that we're entering 2023 i i can't wrap my head around it it's crazy me neither but just flew been, by what would you say it's been the best uh highlight for you so far this year oh there's been there's been a lot i mean uh i would say from a live touring aspect the audience like finally feeling like they can celebrate again all of us feeling like we can kind of celebrate again you know, coming off of two years of the pandemic, it was just really a great feeling to get back to live touring in a in a big way where it felt normal again. So that that was a huge highlight for me. And then uh, releasing my record was a huge highlight for me as well. Absolutely, Genesis, which yes. you know I want to talk about. Um, it's I love that it's so eclectic, like so many different sounds on the album. It's, Thank you. You know, funky kind of. Times that kind of poppy, and then other times it's like late sixties, early seventies hard rock. Which right? <laughs> yeah. No, thank you so much. It was a lot of fun to put together. I mean, it sounds that way, you know, by design. It's a multi-genre album intentionally because it's kind of it speaks to the album. The concept of the album speaks to my origin. It's my origin story as an artist and sounds that inspire me. So. That's why it's a multi-genre album because I'm inspired by so many different styles of music. Oh, I love that. You know, yeah. It's definitely like a fun roller coaster ride, you know. Right. I, I love albums like that. Oh, I'm I, I like that word roller coaster. That it, especially in the track listing and everything. I was like, okay, I want it to feel like this and needs to ramp up, and then we need to come down, and then we need to, you know, coast here, and then we need to ramp it back up, you know. So that's yeah, roller coasters is, is uh yeah, it's like it's full of loops and of turns and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> excitement. <laughs> no, and I want to talk about, uh, you know, Let There Be Light. It's such a fun song and video. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was that was fun to put together. I wrote that song in about 30 minutes. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, part of the concept for the record is a biblical allegory. And one of the first, uh, the first words that God spoke in the Bible was let there be light. And so I, that dawned on me in the late night in the studio. And I was like, oh, that would be a freaking awesome way to kind of open up the record. And so I grabbed my guitar, started off with the riff and then lay the drums down. And it just kind of a snowball effect after that. And I was just, you know, when you, as a musician, when you feel like you're in the zone, it doesn't matter how late it is in the studio, you just got to get that idea out. So that was one of those moments. That's awesome. No, that's... Do you pl do you play anything? I just have to ask. Oh, um, you know, I wish that's one of my biggest regrets is not sticking with an instrument. Uh, when I was younger, I took one year of piano lessons, and then, you know, in fifth grade, when you get to choose an instrument, sure, so I, I chose the drums, and I was like one of the only girls playing the drums. Yeah, that's my parents awesome. bought me a drum set, um, which I had in the basement, but. I didn't play it enough, so they're like, you know, if you're not going to play it, we're going to get rid of the drums. So sure, sure. I'm, I'm kicking myself. Like, why? Well, I... <laughs> you know, it's never too late. Whether you're five or eighty-five, you can no. There's no better time to learn an instrument now because when I started playing guitar, I remember. Uh, well, I remember my parents playing a lot of things on vinyl, um, but when I started learning how to play the instrument. I would listen to my favorite records on cassette and, you know, try to analyze what I was hearing. And then inevitably the cassette would unravel and then I'd have to take a pencil and, you know, f put it all back together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything. You know, <laughs> nowadays you don't have to worry about any of that. You just go to YouTube. Exactly. And you can slow it down frame by frame and you go, how did Joe Satriani play that guitar solo? Oh, the, here it is. Step by step instructions. So there's no better time to learn if you ever wanted to learn. Yeah, I, I bought a guitar a few years ago and I was um, going on YouTube and I found this guy named Justin Guitar. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah. and I, I was just watching his video. So 
know, I don't like the basic chords at the moment, but hopefully I'll get past that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all about having fun. It's just, you know, expressing yourself through through the instrument. Yeah, I'd love to be able to play like all my favorite guitar riffs eventually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll get <laughs> which there. I wanted to ask you, um, you know, what's what's the riff that you're most proud of, like out of oh. all your songs? Oh, all my songs. Uh that's tough. Uh like that's like choosing a favorite song. I mean, that's there's true. a lot of there's a lot of cool moments. So like when I'm writing a song, you know, I think a lot in terms of sentiment and feeling. Like how is this how does this make me feel, you know? And if I feel this way, hopefully the listener will feel this way. And so there's a lot of cool moments kind of sprinkled throughout the record. One moment in particular that stands out to me on this record is uh the guitar solo on when it comes to you. When I recorded that, not meaning to kind of sound like a narcissist or float my own boat or anything. <laughs> I, I recorded it and it was just like, I just hit record. There was no punching in or anything like that. I just hit record and just whatever came out is what came out and that's what you hear. Uh, but then when I listened back to it, I was it was one of those moments where it's like, wait, did I really play that? I was like, that sounds, I like that. You know, it sounds really good. So that that's something I was really proud of. But there's, there's moments throughout the whole record where, you know, it's like, you know, you just... Uh, just really, really proud of, you know, whether you want to call it favorite riffs or favorite moments or, you know, lyrics. I'm a, I'm a big uh, poetry lyric head and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot uh, I can say that I, I'm really, really proud of in that, on that record. Okay. You should be. Yeah. I'm sure it's hard to, to choose a favorite. <laughs> yeah. It's like choosing your favorite kid or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Which no one should do. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Um, and so what's next uh, for you? What are you working on at the moment? So uh, we, uh, I'm currently working on a deluxe version of the record, Genesis, uh, with additional songs and extended tracks and remixes and whatnot. Um, we have a few videos coming out as well for the record touring in 2023 this new music that i've been working on is definitely something on the horizon uh i'm still touring with sheila e i'm her lead guitarist so i have a gig next week and then we the the, the tours for her are crazy starting uh 2023 we're doing a cruise and then we have you know a bunch of tour dates you know from february through march and and onward so it's a uh we're we're coming right out the gate blaze with guns blazing in 2023 awesome no, I think yeah. it's going to be a big year. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. That's very exciting. Yeah. I'm glad for, for you that everything's ramping up. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, 2022 was, it was a blur in and of itself. Like we were talking earlier. I can't believe that we're already towards the end of it and, uh, you know, on to the new year. But, you know, it's exciting. Um, you know, the future is full of possibilities. Exactly. I want to also ask you, um, this might be a tough question too, but uh, what's like the best concert you ever attended as a fan? Uh, Prince. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that that kind of goes, that's, that's an easy question for, for me. Um, you know, what was interesting because I, because I've seen him play live a few times, quite a few times. Um, but there was one where he played here in Minneapolis. Um, I can't remember what year it was, um, but it was at the Target Center here. Um, and I was a little bit older because um, I grew up listening to his music. My parents, um, that's they, they met working on the Purple Rain World Tour. Um, so I was definitely more than familiar with his material, um, but having a chance to kind of see it um, a little more up close and personal as an as a young adult was just really eye opening and impactful for me because you know he's arguably one of the 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 world's you know greatest performers of all time, and you know, I I call him like a modern day Mozart. And so to kind of see him in his element in his city was just really cool. Oh man. Yeah, that must have been memorable. Yeah. I unfortunately never got to see him live. But yeah, I can only was, imagine, you know, what it was, it was like. <laughs> it was a spectacle and a party. And as an audience, you almost felt like he, uh 
you almost felt like another band member it, as a person sitting in the audience watching the show. It was very engaging. Is there um, kind of like a deep track from him that you would recommend to people? Um, one that you know what one that I always go back to. Uh, there's so many to choose from, but one that's really cool um, that I really like the guitar solo in. It might not be a super duper deep cut, but it's a live version of Dance Electric that he did on uh, the Jimmy Kimmel show. And uh, it's just the arrangement is cool because, you know, there's there's horns involved and stuff on the track now uh, on the, in that live version. And then he whips out his guitar and there's this incredible solo that he does. And it's I'm still trying to figure out, like, wait, how did he how did he do that? Like, what the wait, what pedal was he using right then and there? It's like it's a crazy, crazy solo because it's not. It's it's one of those he's one of those guitar players like a like a Jimi Hendrix where you're not listening to the instrument you're listening to his soul when he mm -hmm. plays and so you know it's not about the, you know the 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 technicality or you know this the oh the the speed of the notes or any it's like you're listening to someone bear their soul it transcends all of that and uh, it's just really cool so check that one out. I'll definitely but have can, to. Yeah, you can look it up on YouTube. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll find it. Yeah, because I know like some guitarists, they're kind of referred to as like a flashy guitarist, where they're just trying to show off how fast they can play, and then others are more about right. um, really emoting with their instrument. And right, yeah. right. And he he was definitely definitely that. You know, it's it's what what lends best to this musical moment. You know, as opposed to okay. You know, I practiced this riff a million times. You know, let me show this one off really quick. You know, it's it was definitely about making every moment on stage one to remember and in a magical one. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check out that video. You said it was on yeah. Jimmy. Jimmy Allen Kimmel. Or? Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Dance Electric. Yeah, the live version. Yeah, I'm watching the fireworks behind you, and I'm like, you know, pretty soon we're going to hey, be celebrating the New Year's. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> celebrating. Yeah. So it's like perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, th there's a lot to celebrate this time of year. You know, you kind of recap everything that happened. And, you know, I'm just filled with gratitude. I'm just I'm just grateful for, you know, not not only us being able to come out of, you know, two years of this pandemic, all of, you know, all of us and, you know, um, you know, celebrate a new, this new sort of um, for, uh, newfound sort of freedom almost that we have, you know, that was really evident when live touring came back as well. It's like, you know, we can celebrate again, you know, it's like, oh yeah, we can all be together and, you know, enjoy this concert, you know, unite over, you know, this uh, universal language that we call music. Exactly. And then appreciate really cool. I think, at least for me, I'm appreciating it even more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was something that I didn't realize myself that I missed, uh, or that was such a big part of my life, live touring, um, until it was gone. And then you're like, oh, wow, I really miss that, you know? And so to be, have it come back and uh, for us to be as busy as we've been, it's been great. Awesome. And is Boston uh, on the upcoming tour dates? Ooh, I have to look. I actually quite possibly. Um, you know what? I don't. I'm trying to look at my calendar right now. Because, <laughs> no worries. If, if it, not. We we could. Um, I will. Let me see. Not immediately. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but I can let you know when we come through. Oh, actually, no. I am. Uh, February 10th, the City Winery. Oh, yes, City Winery. That's a yep. good venue. With uh, with Sheila E and the E Train. So we'll be there um performing on oh, February nice. 10th. I'll so, definitely catch that. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna get your contact information. I'll reach out and maybe you can come to the show if it Oh if absolutely. It works with your the City Winery is yeah. fun. Yeah. Great. Awesome. See? Well, How about that? I know, Look right? It. Another out. reason to celebrate, hence the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the lucky fireworks. <laughs> yep. Awesome. I can't wait to catch that. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be a good time. And and all of you watching, if you're in Boston, come on down February yes. 10th. <laughs> Don't want to miss it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, Michael, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, chat with me. And you know, once you, again, Jen. I'm really loving the new music. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the honor is mine. Thank you so much.